Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Exhaust seems to experience a coronary failure and scratch notification Sharon isn't herself. At dark red lights, Chelsea says thanks to Adam for coming rapidly, she talked with Connor's social specialist and he had a leading edge yesterday. Adam pants, goodness, say thanks to God. He had the option to eat some food he feared. Sharon hears and goes along with them to enthuse over Connor's advancement. Chelsea makes sense of that the treatment blended in with the right dose of medications, something's clicking. Sharon's so satisfied for Connor and the two of them. Adam pronounces they can, and they will arrive. Chelsea and Adam sit, and Sharon happens about investing great effort out there. Chelsea thinks Adam is struggling. Adam can't resist the urge to address assuming that they pursued the ideal choice. His misfortunes and obstacles have been so extraordinary. Sharon expresses that will be normal. There will be promising and less promising times. Chelsea reminds him they just got uplifting news. Sharon lets them know when they get as far as possible and they obtain that outcome, they'll be so happy, thus will Connor. Chelsea advises Adam that their child needs to see them. Isn't unreasonably perfect? Adam can't tolerate going there and be let down once more. In Paris, Alan comes by Ashley's condo to refresh Tracy on Ashley's advancement. Jack shows up and asks how things are going, how's our sister doing? Alan reports that his associates ensured her change to the center was smooth. She'll get only benevolence there. At the point when he left the previous evening, she's still up in the air, solid, fearless self. Jack and Tracy let him know they'll be everlastingly thankful. Alan feels regretful about Martin, however Jack says he's not to fault for the activities of his sibling. Alan feels he ought to have accomplished other things to monitor him. Tracy doesn't know what else he might have done. Ray says he's made for it with the consideration he's given Ashley. They go over how Ashley came to be at the facility. Alan clarifies she'll have for process everything, it's the best way to manage the other characters they're mindful of, and the ones we aren't. Alan makes sense of that as a rule, modifies show up in youth, because of serious or continuous injury. The characters permit the individual to disassociate, to get by. Jack is certain he would have seen this, however Alan says changes can slip through the cracks in youth. They might be considered play-acting or fanciful companions. They go lethargic for significant stretches of time and get reactivated by awful accidents. Something might have occurred among adolescents and this latest occasion. Tracy noticed that Ashley has a past filled with psychological maladjustment however saw nothing like this as of not long ago. Alan says they need to concentrate on the real issues at hand. Jack and Tracy can't stand the possibility of their sister remembering something so horrible and can't move past this event during their experience growing up without them being familiar with it. According to Tracy, something so horrendous that it set off the production of these changes to safeguard her. Jack breathes out. More, Phyllis's new storyline. In Exhaust's suite in Paris, he tunes in as and settles on decisions to the bored individuals. She reports that the man was exceptionally mindful so as not to warn her to anything. Exhaust murmurs that nobody is calling him back. This is certainly not a decent sign. He requests that she push the gathering so they can delay. I won't allow Audra to pull off this. Trevor St. John, Gina Garcia Sharp. In her suite, Audra gets ready for the executive gathering and grins. More, will Neil and Catherine's heritage be discolored? In Exhaust's suite, and lets him know nobody will consent to push the gathering. Exhaust says this is of control. He moans, goodness, damn, Audra. He puts on his boots and pronounces, there's just something single left to do. Trevor St. John. More, YNR projects newbie to go about Exhaust's messy responsibilities. In Audra's suite, she glimmers to her last discussion with Exhaust in which he told her all he needs is to accompany her and offering her glissade. Unfortunate Exhaust, you thought I wanted your freebies. She gets a text from Victor requesting that she let him know when the board has casted a ballot and answers, obviously. A thump comes at the entryway. 
It's exhaust. More review. Will Daniel get another opportunity? Audra advises him to disappear. Exhaust argues for one final discussion. He asks her not to proceed with this. He's contribution her the organization to run as she wishes. Exhaust certain she would rather not pay all due respects to some strange financial backer who's breathing down her neck the entire time. He'll give it to her, liberated. She says it's short of what was needed. He inquires as to why. Simply take the success unobtrusively without embarrassing me. Without devastating me in the business world. He reminds her how they've affected one another. Audra exhausts that he put every other person before her. She has a gathering to get ready for. Exhaust says she can drop it assuming that he takes his proposition. All of this is on the grounds that he wouldn't walk out on his child. Audra says he's slowing down for time and she's not intrigued. Exhaust focuses he's in Paris with her. I'm right here. I'm not with Ashley, I'm not with Devin. He's putting her first. Audra doesn't mind any longer. Exhaust never figured she could be this noxious and awful. Trevor St. John, Zuleika Silver. Audra won't defer the gathering and says pretty much nothing remains to be worked out. The funding is set up. Exhaust contends she could stop it. What has befallen you? Audra says he'll be very much redressed. It's finished and there's no way around it presently. Exhaust sneers, obviously. I don't have the foggiest idea why I didn't see it previously. I know precisely who your financial backer is. More, insane business victories ahead. At Blood Red Lights, Sharon returns to work and lets Adam and Chelsea talk. Chelsea lets him know she has fears as well, another dismissal would be practically agonizing. Assuming something turns out badly, they need to keep the confidence and rest on one another. Adam knows, it's an interaction. This moment isn't the opportunity to surrender. Chelsea concurs, they need to embrace trust. She needs to call Connor and check whether he truly maintains that them should come. Adam's ready so they choose to make a beeline for his place. They come by Sharon's table to say thanks to her for being caring. Sharon's eager to assist anybody she can. At the point when this is before, they will help another person. We as a whole need to rest on one another. It's the best way to get to the opposite side. More, spoiler, back on set at YNR. At Adam's place, he and Chelsea are good to go up for the video visit and enthuse over Connor noting their text immediately. Before long, Connor brings in and inquires as to whether they found out about what he ate today. I did it. I had soup. He didn't stress over assuming that there was anything in it. Indeed, he stressed, yet he dealt with it. This is nothing to joke about. They praise him on his leap forward. Connor concurs, it's great. Chelsea and Adam clasp hands and grin at one another. Connor lets them know he will visit with them this time, on the off chance that they're not excessively occupied. They guarantee them they'll be there. Chelsea says she disappeared from non-attendance, however Connor doesn't maintain that her life should be flipped around. Chelsea says he is her life. Adam tells her that Sally's filling in for her. They deal to jump on a plane this evening to see them. According to Connor, I can hardly stand by. They pillar.